Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna Lee Matasek. I work for Club Assistant. And today I'm going to walk you through how to set up a master's meet for online entry assistant software. Then we'll pretend that uh, I'm a swimmer entering the meet. I'll do a test entry and enter the meet. And then I'll show you how the meet director can view those meet entries um, and can change the swimmer's entry times or that sort of thing. So most of the time I'll be sharing my screen. Um, and this is kind of a high level overview. The club assistant software is very pow powerful when it comes to doing online meet entry. It can do a lot. And my specialty is master's meets, but the software also can handle high school meets, uh, community college meets, a lot of different types of swim meets and swim events. So um, this, keep in mind, we're just doing sort of a high level overview and we have lots of features for whatever type of uh, swim team and swim event you want to host. If you ever have questions or want more information, you can write to our email address meets at clubassistant.com and we'll make sure your question gets directed to the appropriate staff member and they'll be able to answer your questions. Okay, so I'm going to begin by sharing my screen and uh, we're gonna first just walk through me creating kind of a fake swim meet. Let me see if I can share my screen. All right, so uh, I'm a member of the Sarasota Sharks Masters team and I help them run their events. So I'm in the Sarasota Sharks Masters account. That's what I'm using to, today to create my, my swim meet. And uh, we recommend that you try to copy a past meet when you set up a new meet. Um, if you are setting up your very first swim meet ever, Club Assistant would like to help you set up that meet the first time because there are a lot of settings, lots of features, and we would rather help you do the setup with your first meet to kind of make sure we get all of those features put in there correctly. And then after that, for similar meets, you can copy last year's meet setup, for example. So that's what I'm going to do in this demo. I'm going to copy uh, the, the setup from a, a previous meet. and. I'm going to go to swim competitions. I should say this is our your home page. Uh, when you have your club assistant account, this is the club assistant home page. And I'm going to go to swim competitions and I'm just going to show all to show you all of the previous swim meets that have been run through this um, account. And I'm going to go to this meet that was held last year. It's called the 2019 Shark Tank Short Course Meters Meet. Uh, and I clicked on the meet, but I could have also clicked the copy meet button. Uh, I, I by habit clicked the meet name. And what I'm going to do though at the top here is click copy meet. And I'm going to copy this meet setup to my new fake meet. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to give this meet a name and it's going to be called the 2020 Sharks and Minnows meet. And it's going to be a short course meters meet. That's what the previous meet was. Um, the start date, uh, we will say is, we're just gonna make one up here, um, October, let's see, let's go back here and do October three. And the meet last year was a two day meet. We're gonna leave it like that. And then we're gonna open for entries June 26th this year. And we want entries to be due since it is an October meet. I'm gonna have entries due on October 1. And we're not gonna worry about relays. I'm gonna put that where that's an advanced feature. We're not gonna do that for this meet this year. Um, this meet had three sessions last year. I'm just gonna copy those sessions and it had a total of 32 events. I'm just gonna copy all of those. Um, for the fees, this meet, uh, had either you could pay a one day meet fee if you were just entering one a day or two days. And so I'm going to copy those. We call them merchandise items. And I clicked this button at the bottom that said copy meet. Now it takes me to a page that actually shows me the list of all of the events from last year in the order they were swum. And this is a complicated page. I'm not going to get into it. 
uh, but this is where you could change the order of your events. If I didn't want that first event, event to be the women's 800 free, for example, I could change it, make it something else. Uh, I, again, I'm just going to hit submit. We're going to copy last year's, leave the same layout for this meet. And I'm now taken to what we call the swim competition setup form. This is a form for this particular meet, and this is where we make all of our other settings uh, for this meet. There are tabs that you see here. The first tab, the blue one right now, is called Quick Form, and you see I'm clicking on different tabs. I'm going to quickly go through those. The Quick Form is the basic meet information. Now, some of this has already been filled in. That's what I did on one of those previous screens when I was performing the copy function. So it's already got our current meet name and it's got the competition dates uh, but here's it's already got 25 meters for the course um, I mentioned last year's meet was a short course meters meet if I if this year we were running it as a short course yards this is where I would change that but what I kind of want to emphasize on this page is the description box for the meet and this is going to be all of the text and description for this meet that is going to be on what we call your club assistant landing page. Anytime you create a new meet or event in club assistant, you get a customized web page for that meet. Uh, this is one of the really nice features about the club assistant software. You're going to get a unique URL or link to a customized web page that has all the information for your meet where swimmers come and uh, view the information and then they can enter from that page. So what's in this description box is what's going to be on your club assistant landing page. Uh, for this particular meet uh, from last year, they had a nice photo that they put at the top of the page of the pool. And you see though that there's some out of date uh, information that was copied over from last year's description page that we would need to change for this meet you know it's it's showing last year's uh meet name for example and i think we called this the sharks 2020 sharks and minnows meet and uh you know the dates uh we changed our dates now i'm not going to go through and change everything else but you what you would do is you would update all of these dates you know last year had three sessions this is something you'd have to go through and do on your landing page and we'll see in a minute what i mean by landing page i'm going to show you that page after we save it and get to that point um this is where for you who are familiar with usa swimming i think they call this the meat letter in usa swimming this is all the information about this meet. It tells you who's eligible to swim in it, uh, how many events you can swim per day, um, how much it costs, are, are they going to have heat sheets at the meet, um, are they going to have relays, what, whatever is unique for your meet, you would put on this page. Anything you want the swimmers to see when they're viewing your meet and deciding whether they want to enter or not. Uh, at the bottom of this page, this particular meet, um, this is not common for a lot of meets you don't need to do this because you're going to see that the order of events will, would get automatically generated for your landing page this particular meet they also typed in all the order of events the reason they did that was this meet had a lot of breaks built in and they wanted to show where all of those breaks were located uh, normally you wouldn't need to do this you'll, you'll see what i mean again when we get to the landing page now, I made a few changes on this meet, and another thing for you to keep in mind is you're going through and making changes to your competition form. At the top or bottom of every page for these tabs, you'll see an update button, and you want to make sure that you click update when you make changes on that page to make sure they get saved. It's not dynamic. It's not going to save them automatically until you click update. So I'm just going to click update to save the changes I made on that page to the meet name. I'll go through these other tabs pretty quickly. Um, location is the pool or venue where your meet is going to be held, and we're held, holding it at the same event or same venue as last year, so we don't need to change that. Additional info tab has a couple of important things. The most important is your entry, open, and close dates. 
And you may recall when I copied the meat, I filled those in. But if you want to change those at any time, you can do so on this tab. Um, the relay open and close, we're not doing that for this meet, so I'm just deleting those. Um, if you are running an event, this happens a lot with open water, an event that has a maximum number of entrants allowed, you could put it in here in this box that says maximum entrance. Uh, this, for example, you're running an open water race, you have to limit it to 200 people. You could put 200 people in there, save that, and then when you open your event for entries, when you hit 200 swimmers, entries will automatically close. So it's nice because that's something you don't have to remember to do. You don't have to look at your entries every day and manually close it. It will do that automatically for you. And I suppose there could be swim meets that also have maximum entries. It's not as common for a swim meet. I didn't make any changes on this page, so I'm not gonna hit update, but I'm gonna go on through the other tabs. Uh, the meet links tab, we're going to skip over. That's not something you typically need to use. The online meet entry tab is an important one, though. Uh, for a lot of swim meets, there are event limits to the number of events per day a swimmer can enter. This particular meet, if you look down here at the individual daily event limit, it's got a limit of five events per day that the swimmer can enter. And then up here, athlete individual. Uh, event limit, that's the total, is 10. So swimmers can enter five events each day at this meet. Um, you also see here for submitted times, there's a checkbox checked, swimmer must enter a time. No time not allowed. What this means is you, this particular meet is not allowing what we call no time entries. Some meets do, some don't. Uh, a no time entry would be a swimmer who just says, I want to swim the 800 free and they don't provide a seed time. In this case, by checking this box, the software is forcing the swimmer to give a seed time. And this helps the meet director when they're seeding the event. You'll see how this works when we get to our test entry. Um, one of the biggest, most important features of Club Assistant software is the ability for Club Assistant to automatically verify for you if a swimmer is a current member of their swimming national governing body. And Club Assistant can do that for several governing bodies. They can do it for U.S. Master Swimming, for USA Swimming, and for uh, Master Swimming Australia. So, um, and Master Swimming Candidate too, I'm sorry. So this particular meet um, looks like they get some Master Swimming Canada entries. And so they've checked that they want the software to verify if somebody's a USMS member or MSC, that's Master Swimming Canada. Um, and then they're also allowing what we call FINA entries, which would be a master swimmer who belongs to a governing body of some other country. Those are not automatically uh, confirmed by the software. The meet director does that, but someone who swims in the country of the Bahamas, let's say, is allowed to enter this meet. Uh, let's see, I didn't make any changes to this page, so I'm not gonna hit save. We're gonna go on to the next page, which is, uh, next tab, excuse me, merchandise. Merchandise is where you are going to select uh, or set up the entry fees for your event. And I copied these from last year's event and we're keeping the prices the same this year. It can be a one day fee or a two day fee, uh, depending on if the swimmer enters events one or two days. Don't be uh, put off by this long list of merchandise. This account uses um, or is used for a lot of different things. And I'm going to have to scroll down a little ways to get to the merchandise items that pertain to this meet. Uh, but they are right here. There's a one-day meet fee of $30 and a two-day meet fee of $50. So you'll see when I get to the test entry that the swimmer will, will automatically get charged a proper fee depending on if they enter events for one day or two days. So I'm not making any changes to this tab. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the top here and we've got custom fields. Custom fields are a very nice feature for a meet director to use. They can ask all sorts of 
custom questions. Um, and one of the most important is emergency contact information, uh, especially for open water events, not, not ne necessarily for pool events, but uh, many times a meet director wants an emergency contact name and phone number that they can have on hand in case there's an issue at the event. So for this meet, we had this set up in this account already from a previous event. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check the boxes for those two custom questions. So the swimmer is going to get asked for their emergency contact information when they enter this swim meet when I, by me checking these boxes. Since I checked these, they weren't checked before, I'm gonna click update to make sure I save it for this meet. And that was the custom field tab. So now we come to what we call the registration review tab. And again, I went through these really quickly. I'm giving you kind of a top level view. There's a lot more features that uh, the software can do uh, that we, we didn't see, but I want you to see now what the landing page looks like to the swimmers. And that's what this very first link is, the publication link. This is the link you always use if you're gonna give your custom landing page URL out to anybody. Uh, I'm going to just open it in a new tab in my browser. So I'm gonna right click and click on open new tab. And I'm gonna go up here and click that tab. So this is what your swimmers would see if you gave them the link for your landing page. Uh, you see that they've got, we've got the meet title at the top. Uh, it tells the dates of the meet. Um, it tells what day it's gonna open and close for entries. And then you see that right now, it says online registration is in build mode. That's automatic anytime you copy a new meet. This means nobody can enter yet because you're building the meet. Now down below, if you remember, we talked about that description box in our quick form tab. Here's where all that information displays on the landing page. And you see the photo that we saw before and the meet information. Again, remember I had changed just these two lines to kind of show you how that works, but I didn't go through and update all the rest of it like you would normally want to do. So this is what the swimmers are seeing. Remember when they're looking at whether they should enter your event or not, they scroll down and uh, you may recall that I mentioned that you don't have to type in all of this information with the order of events because it would be auto-generated. So let me show you what, where it's auto-generated. It's actually just below this. Uh, from, from here on down, this was auto-generated from the setup of your order of events in the Club Assistant software. So they can see immediately the event numbers, whether it's a men's, women's, or a mixed event, and what event it is, and they know what, they can see what events are on Saturday, and what events are on Sunday, and that's it. Now, when this event opens for entries, at the top here, it's not gonna say in build mode anymore. What it's gonna say instead is, there will be a big button that says register now, and they'll click on that button, and they'll be able to enter the event. Since we're in build mode, they can't do that right now from this public, publication link. Now I'm going back to our competition form and I mentioned we can do a test entry. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do a test entry and you're going to see how a swimmer enters the event and we'll be in what we call test mode. This is a fake entry. Um, I'm going to start with the testing link uh, for this meet. And this is a link that you never, never want to give out to anybody. Don't give this out to the public. This is just for you to test. This is not your publication link. The top link is your publication link. So please do not give out your test link to anybody, but I'm going to open up this test page because this is how we do our test entries. So again, I'm just going to open that in a new tab and I'm going to go to that tab and you will see it looks pretty much like the page we were looking at before, the landing page, except you see a big gray button that says test register online now. That's how I know I'm in the test page. I'm going to do a test entry. So I'm going to pretend now I'm a swimmer. I want to enter this event. I'm going to click on test online now. And 
the first page I come to has three icons, one for US Master Swimming, one for Master Swimming Canada, and one for FINA. You may recall that in our setup, those were the three governing bodies that had been checked on that, that setup page. Um, if someone is a USMS member, what they do is they click the button and then they are taken to a, conf a verification page where they enter their USMS number, their name, their birth date, sex, and the club assistant software will automatically verify their USMS membership against USMS's database to verify that they really are a member. Um, for my test entry, I'm not going to go through this USMS path just because I would be using my own number and then I would be displaying my personal information on the screen with my birth date and my address. So I'm not going to do that for this demo. But for the majority of your swim entries, they are going to be USMS members. They're going to go through this page and then it's going to autofill their name and address on the next screen. So I'm going to back up one page and for, again, for the test entry only, I'm going to enter as a, a FINA member, which means I'm a swimmer from another country. And I'm doing this so you can see me enter all of the swimmers biographical data. Um, so I can, it's a test entry. I can enter anybody into this meet and I usually just do use Disney characters for my swimmers. And so um, Mickey Mouse is going to enter this meet. and. I'm making up a birth date for Mickey. And any field that's got the red asterisk is a required field. So you can see, for example, middle name's not required, but they can enter it if they want. Uh, home phone is required, cell is not, but a lot of people don't have a home phone anymore, so they can just enter their cell in this field. Um, Mickey's, here's Mickey's phone number. For email, I'm gonna enter my own email address. And I can't select the United States because the club assistant software would direct me to go back and use the US master swimming entry path. Uh, what I'm going to do just for this particular test is I'm going to pick the Bahamas, since that's the country I mentioned before. And I will make up Mickey's address. He lives on Main Street. He lives in Orlando. And here's his address. Uh, again, he lives in the Bahamas. He's also a member of the Baha Bahama National Swimming Federation. So I'm going to click that. And if he has a club that he belongs to, we can enter that club abbreviation. And if he has, if his federation issues membership numbers, he could put that in if he had it. If not, he doesn't need to. These are not required fields. So. Mickey is going on to the next page. And remember, we added two custom questions to our meet entry, the emergency contact information. So these are now displayed and required. They've got the red dot. So he is going to put in his emergency contact and he's putting in her phone number and he's going to submit. And now, He's on the page where he is going to be selecting the events he wants to swim in the meet. I'm going to do this twice because I want you to see what happens if he selects events for one day versus selecting events for two days. So first, uh, we're just going to have Mickey enter himself on Saturday for some Saturday events. And he's going to swim the 100 fly. So he has to put in a seed time. You may recall we said no time entries are not allowed. So he can't put in all zeros. He's got to put in a seed time. So for the 100 fly, Mickey's seed time will be one minute. And he's going to swim the 200 breast also. So his time for that event is going to be two minutes. And those are the only two events he wants to enter. He's not available Sunday. So he goes to the bottom of the page. He clicks continue. And this takes him to the fee page. And you see, one of the nice features of this software is it figured out he's only entering the meet one day and the meet director set up two different prices, one for a one day meet, one for two days. And it automatically tells him 
he's going to be paying the one day meet fee of $30. Now, I'm going to go back a page and show you what happens if Mickey changes his mind and says, I think I want to swim two days. He can go back a page. It saved his seed times from Saturday. And now let's add a couple of events for Sunday. Uh, he wants to do the 100 breaths too. And his time for that is going to be a minute 30. And he wants to do the 200 fly. And his time for that is going to be three minutes. So now he's going to hit continue. And you'll see that the software automatically recalculated and said, oh, he's entered for two days. So now he needs to be charged the two day meet fee of $50. So Mickey is now ready to move on to checkout. He clicks proceed to checkout. This particular meet setup is uh, a sanctioned meet sanctioned by U.S. Master Swimming. So the U.S. Master Swimming liability release is automatically built into the software. And this is the liability release. And he has to click that he agrees to this release of li liability. If the swimmer tries to enter the meet and pay without clicking, they will get an error. So they are required to check that. Then below that, you see he can review what events he entered and what his seed times were that he entered. And if he realizes he made a mistake, he can click change swim events. It'll go back to that event page and he can correct the seed times or, or just uh, delete some events and add others. Once he's decided, yes, these are the events I want to swim, he sees again, you're going to, he's going to be charged $50. And now he's asked for his credit card information. Uh, we have, because we're doing a test entry, we are going to use a test credit card. You, uh, and it'll fill in the number automatically if you click use test data. Do not ever enter real credit card information on this test entry page because your card will get charged. So please, when you're doing your test entries, use the test data for the credit card. Because it's a test, it, we can use anything for the name and address on the card. And I'm going to click copy from previous page to copy over. A and this copy from previous page that's available in the live system when your swimmers are entering your meet. So they don't have to type in all of their billing information again if it matches their home address. Uh, if the swimmer wants to send you a note, uh, he could type it here. And then at the very bottom, you see the refund and cancellation policy. And again, this is another one that the swimmer must agree to the refund cancellation policy, otherwise they'll get an error message. Uh, so they have to check this box. Now, once they check and submit, their card is going to be charged and they are going to go to a receipt page. So I'm clicking submit. And now we're at the receipt page. So this shows the swimmer. He has just entered this meet and here's all the biographical information he entered. He's got a web entry ID. We're gonna see that a little bit later. That's called the SID, which stands for system ID or swimmer ID. It's unique for every person who enters your event. And you'll see he gets to review the events he entered, how much he paid. He will also receive an email that contains all of this information. So the swimmer is basically getting two confirmations when they enter the meet, one on the screen and then another one by email. Now that the swimmer has entered the meet, what I'd like to do is go back as the meet director to view the swimmers who have entered my meet so far. There are a lot of ways you can pull data from your club assistant account. And uh, what I'd like to do is just show you how to view who has entered your meet. And then if they contact you and for example, they need to make a change to their entry time, how you would go about doing that. So I'm going to go back. I went to back to my original tab and I'm going back to my club assistant homepage. And your homepage will look similar to this. If you want to just see your most recent online registrations, the members tab is the one you use. And uh, 
to see your most recent new online registrations, you just click new online registrations from the pull down menu. When I go there, I, I see a bunch of names. A lot of these are left over from a previous meet, uh, but at the bottom are the newest entries. And you will see today's April 20th, and you will see here's our swimmer who just entered the meet. It shows that he completed his meet entry in this payment method uh, column. You'll see that it says CC, that means credit card, uh, which means he completed successfully and he paid. Now you'll notice I did a demo a few days ago and didn't go all the way through the process and didn't complete the payment. And so that one says incomplete in red. Sometimes you'll see that um, you'll see another one up here. There's a, here's a swimmer that has an incomplete and then a complete. It may mean that they started their entry and they had to stop halfway through for some reason. And then they came back later and they started over and the second time they completed it and paid. Back down at the bottom here, Mickey, here's what we call the SID, swimmer ID or system ID. This is that unique ID that he was assigned for his entry. And to view Mickey's member form, I can just click on his SID. So I'm going to do that. And this takes me to Mickey's member form. This is a member form created for Mickey just for this meet, for this meet entry. If he entered previous events in this account, he has other member forms for those meets, for those entries. So this, this member form is unique to this Sharks and Minnows meet. You can see, uh, you'll be able to view a lot of information about Mickey, all the biographical information he entered, his address, his birth date, his phone, his email. We scroll down uh, here in the payments section, you'll see this is his completed payment and it tells you what he paid for. It was the two day meat fee, the sharks and minnows meat. Now, normally in the live system, it would show that he paid $50. You see right now it's a $0. Uh, again, that's because this was a test entry, fake credit card, fake entry. That's why it's showing zero dollars, but normally it would show the actual amount he paid and what was charged on his card. Now we're going to scroll down some more and you see that this shows the credit card he used had a billing name of Mickey Mouse and the credit card number ends in 1111. I'm going to scroll down some more and this section that's titled swimming gives you information on exactly what meat did he enter. Now we saw that in our meat, our merchandise in the payment section up here, but down here you see the sharks and minnows meat and you see that he's marked as attending. That's because that's the meat he entered for this member form. Um, let's pretend that Mickey contacted you and said, hey, I entered an incorrect seed time for my 100 fly. Can you change that? You as the meet director can go into his member form and you can click edit to edit his seed times. So I'll do that just to show you what that page looks like. I click edit. Here he is, verifies his name, and he's entered in four individual events. But here's the 100 fly, and let's say that he said, oh, no, not a minute. I, I swim that in two minutes. So what I can do is, uh, as the meet director, I can go and change that to a two-minute seed time. And again, as we mentioned with the other pages, you always want to make sure that you click the update, or in this case, the button is called Submit, on this page to save that seed time. I'm going to do that. and now. 100 fly, his seed time has been changed to two minutes. To get back to the, the front page of his member form, I just click here for member form. That takes me back to his member form. And um, again, down at the bottom, it still shows he's attending the meet. If he had called me and said, I can't attend anymore, I'm sick, you can change that by clicking attending and then it shows you just a little checkbox, attending or not attending. You could uncheck it and hit submit, and it would take him out of your entries file. Um, it would take him out of the athlete roster. I'm not going to hit submit. We want to leave him in the meet. I'm just going to back out of that screen. The other thing that this section shows you is the swimmer's 
governing body membership information. <clears throat> if he had been a member of US Master Swimming, you would see this section filled in with his USMS number and his club abbreviation. Because he is, uh, he went through the FINA entry path and he swims for the Bahamas, his entry information is in this section. Um, you can also run other types of reports on your swimmers. I'm not going to go into a lot of a detail um, in, in this tutorial, but you can run billing reports. For example, the most common one you would use is called the counting money received. Um, this would be, uh, you want to see how many people have entered this meet and how much they all paid for accounting purposes. So what I can do is go to this page and I can filter by a specific meet. And in this case, it's the sharks and minnows meet. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to check that box. And if I want to display additional fields, I can. And up here, I want to click the payment method box to see what method they used for payment. Uh, we always want to put a start and end date in these fields. The, the, this particular page works better with the start and end date. If you know the date you opened for entries, you could put that for your start date. For this meet, I guess I could have put in today. I'm just gonna put January 1 through today and I'm gonna click submit. And what we see is that uh, Mickey is the only person entered in the meet and he paid a $50 two day meet fee. Um, with any reports in the club assistant software, one of the really nice features is that you can download them to Excel. If you're a person who uses Excel for accounting or for whatever, um, you could just click the Excel button and that will open this report in Excel. And then you can do whatever kind of accounting manipulation you need to do. The other report you will use a lot is the members report. And you can get to it either by going to members, create member report, or we have a reports button and you see that accounting room report again, or the members report. If I click that members report, I can run a report asking for all kinds of information on the entrance for my event. Um, for example, first name, last name, and let's say I want to know the sex of all the entrants, um, and let's put their ages. We'll just have their age as of today, but you could make it age as of any date. And because that's a swim meet, I'm going to click show and I'll filter it just for the sharks and minnows meet. Oh, and maybe I also want to go ahead and run the list of their emergency contact information. So I'm going to check those two boxes and then I'm going to create the report. Again, we only have one entrant right now, but here's the report and you see his name, his sex, his age, <coughs> and his emergency contact information. And again, I can click Excel, download that into an Excel spreadsheet. If I wanted to have a list, let's say on my pool deck of everybody in the meet with their emergency contact information. Okay, uh, we've gone over how a master's meet gets set up, how uh, the entrants enter the meet, and how you as a meet director can view their entries and update their entry times. This is John Carroll. Could, um, is it possible to show how we download or upload the uh, meet entries into Meet Manager? Oh, yeah, okay, that's right. I didn't really even go into that, uh, yeah. Uh, let me share my screen again. That's called the SD3 file. I don't remember what SD stands for, but it's the SD3 file. So you're asking, how do I download my SD3 file so that I can import it into Meet Manager? So uh, what I'm going to do is let me go back to my home page and I'm going to go to that swim competition again. And remember that was the sharks and minnows meet. And I'm going to click on it. 
And I hadn't really mentioned, there's another menu bar that appears and you see it's a dark blue menu bar. Once you've clicked into a specific meet, you get this additional menu bar with a lot of additional features. And um, for the SD3 file, what you would do is you would go to the reports tab and you would click individual entries. What that does is right now we only have Mickey, but if you had more people than that, you would see them all listed here with their events. And then down at the bottom of this page, you see individual event entries SD3 file. Um, what you would do, it says here specified dates, registration dates. A again, it wouldn't be just today. It would be whatever day your entries opened and then the day you're running the, the report. You would click submit and you get a couple of choices here for downloading the file. And I usually just select this one that says download file use on this computer. What that does is on my screen, it opens up a little menu box that says, I've chosen to open this SD3 file. It's saying, what should I do? Should I open it with notepad or should I save it? Typically what I do is I save it. And I think my computer is set to automatically save in my downloads uh, folder. Then what you would do is it would be saved. It would be saved with this SD3 file extension. And then you go to your meet manager software, go into that, and um, I believe it's file import entries. And that's how you import your SD3 file into meet manager. Uh, does that answer your question, Jeff? Yes, thank you. Okay, we have a few more questions here. Okay. Is there an option to not pay online and pay by check in person? Yes. Um, to do that though, um, okay, let's see. The swimmer can either write to the meet director and have them do the entry and mark that it's going to be paid by check. But I admit I'm a little fuzzy on this. There may also be a way that can be set up online so that at the lap final page, the swimmer gets the option of check payment as opposed to credit card. I'd have to look into that, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. Okay, so there's another question. Do you have to enter swimmers individually or do you have a team registration process? Okay, so what I have just demonstrated is for master's meets and for master's meets, master swimmers almost always are entering themselves into meets. Now, I understand it's a lot different for high school and community college and that sort of thing where you're, you've got a coach entering the swimmers? Yes, there, there are other meet setups for that have the coach driven entry for high school and college swimming. So we're gonna be doing another demo on that um, later at another time. Oh, good. So that, stay tuned for that demo. You can send an email to meets at clubassistant.com with that question and we will, direct that to the appropriate person and they can explain how that works. Uh, is there a way to stop people from changing their first name? I don't think there is. Um, when they enter? I'm not sure if that means when they yeah. enter or... That means when they enter and I bet, I'll bet the person is asking because they uh, USMS members register with USMS and let's pretend that um, my name is William but I go by Bill but for whatever reason and with USMS I registered as William sometimes what happens is they will go through the swimmer verification page then they get to that biographical page it's pre-populated with all their USMS registration info, but this, right now the swimmer could go up and they could change their name from William to Bill in the club assistant entry process and then move on. I don't believe we have a way to prevent that. Again, if you can send me your question at meets at club assistant, I can double check. 
Okay, and then a few more requests for showing a couple things about uh, showing how entries can be added and then also showing uh, coupon codes. Oh, okay. Okay, so entries being added, I assume you're talking about we had our entrant Mickey Mouse <clears throat> and now Mickey has come back to the meet director and said, oh, I forgot to enter the 400 IM. I, can I add that event? I'm going to assume that's what we're asking here. So I'm going to go back um, up here to members. And this time I'm going to show you, oh, wait, I have to share my screen. Hang on. OK, I'm going to go up to members. And this time I'm going to show you a different screen that, that um, I didn't show before, the search members screen. And we will go to that. And then uh, his last name was Mouse. So I will just search on that. And we'll see what we come up with in the database. And there's two occurrences, and we remember it was this April 20, <coughs> excuse me, April 20th entry today that he completed. So I'm going to click on his SID to go to his member form again. All right, sorry about the delay there. All right, now we're in Mickey's member form again. I'll go back down. Sorry, I don't want to make you dizzy. I'll go down to the sec section for the meet <clears throat> and I'm going to edit his entries again. And this time we want to add an event. Uh, and here it is. It's the 400 IM. And he said he swims it in 10 minutes. So all I would do again, I'm now I'm the meet director adding this. I type in his seed time and I scroll to the bottom and I hit submit. So now he's been added to that event. And when I, the next time I download my SD3 file, he, he will be included in that event. Now, the other question was coupon codes. That's right. I meant to go through that earlier. So let me quickly explain coupon codes. Sometimes meet directors want to give certain entrants a discount. And so they can do so. They can create custom coupon codes that they could give to one person or a group of people. Um, so that is up in what we call the settings. And then we call that coupon discount code. And I'm going to select that. I'm going to go over here. And first, I'm just going to click, click the list of what was already set up in this account. Um, this account had several that they used in the past for different events. And for example, this one called the Annalise test coupon, it looks like something I set up last year. And you see that the, there's the name of the coupon code, and then there's the code that you actually give to the swimmer. So this free 30 test is what you would give to the swimmer, and that's how, what they would use when they redeem the coupon. Uh, this one was set up to be a $30 discount. And I'm going to click on it just so you can see the setup. Here was the setup. Um, I would, uh, the swimmer would say, get a code called free 30 test. And when they use it, when they're going through their meet entry toward the end, toward that payment page, um, credit card payment page, there will be a box for promo code. And they would just type in the free 30 test and then it would automatically deduct $30 from their total entry fee. Um, the other uh, important piece about setting up your coupon codes is you can set up a start and end date for the code so that it's limited to a certain number of dates. And then you also have a way to disable it. it I mean, in theory, it shouldn't be um, valid after this end date, but let's say you need to shut it off earlier for some reason, you can also click to disable and that that's like a double check to make sure it's disabled. Um, you can either do these coupons by a dollar amount or by a percentage. So if you want to offer just a 10% discount or something like that, instead of offering a number of dollars, you could do a 10% discount and it would be automatically calculated in their shopping cart. Okay, so that's that. Again, everybody meets at clubassistant.com. If you have any more questions, and we'll make sure your question gets to the, to the right staff member and that you get an answer.
And thank you so much, Anna Lee, for doing this demo. You did a great job. Well, thank you, Megan, for being the moderator. And thank you to all for attending. And um, I hope you all have a good day.